And what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Unlocking Excellence with your main man, Eric Schwefel. What is going on? I hope you're ready because today we have a special episode. As you know, here at Unlocking Excellence, what we do is we give you tips and tricks and, of course, the keys to unlock excellence in your own life if you so choose. So I give you a couple of these uh, different episodes. We just finished the series of abundance. You got to hear from one of my friends, Maria. Now we get to hear from another, a longtime friend, and then my second NLP client, Mr. Paul Dupree. Paul, what is going on, man? How are you doing today? I'm good, man. What's going on, bro? <laughs> it's good to see you, sir. It is so good. And I'm so excited because what this conversation means is the, the full completion of your coaching cycle, of our coaching cycle that we had together um, these last few months. So how, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling from the past few months? And then we'll dive in more into to all the details in just a second. I'm wonderful. Every So it's crazy that everything that that we initially wanted to work on is pretty much like my top priorities in my life nowadays. Like that's, that's what I do all day long is like, we, we said, Hey, look, let's work on these things. We worked on them. And like, now that's kind of my everyday life. Um, so yeah, man, I'm good. Dude, as long as I'm upright, you know me. That's amazing. I love it. So you ought to give you a brief history of Paul and I, and then how we started working together. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to remember where we first started. I think it was way back in high school. I'm, I was trying to remember if it was something before that, but I don't think it was before that. I want to say no. It, it, it was right when you started getting into powerlifting. So it was junior year. It was right around junior year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, Paul and I, went to the same high school together. We were both in 07, and then. Yep. We had a couple of classes, hung out with some of the same people. We got to know each other. And then when we, I think you, you were always really into weightlifting and sports. And then when I got it, that's when we really started to connect more. Um, so I was, work, I was working at the gym when you started coming in and prepping for, I want to say your first show. And that might've been, that might've been back in like moving into college and everything, but that was yeah. kind of all around the same time. Bro, bro, that totally, that totally blew right past me. I totally forgot. You were at front desk, huh? Mm-hmm. Yep. Smoothie bar, front desk. That's right. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. That's where one of the, that's where most of it. I see, I thought it was in high school, but it was at the gym, at the smoothie bar, and then front desk where most... So we were connecting at the gym and then during, during college, we started to connect more. I was getting into bodybuilding and then Paul, tell us about what was happening during those years. And then we reconnected a little bit later too. I think I had done a couple of shows and then, um, anyway, fill us, fill us in a little bit of what, what, you know, or what you remember. Um, so I, I definitely, so, and like throughout this time, it, this is the time period of my life where I was like, super crazy you know I was not stable as a person you know I was delving recreationally into drugs and like going down that route and I was still kind of like it's crazy I was always like torn with you know the good and evil side of things so like half of me was like still trying to work out and be healthy and promote fitness and everything and the other half of me was like you know, um, getting high and drinking and doing drugs and it, and, you know, I, I pretty much that, that, that balance or imbalance of those two things that that's pretty much like all through college and moving to Baton Rouge and Hammond and all that stuff, you know, that's pretty much what I did. I was like still being athletic, but still getting in trouble, you know? And, um, so like, I remember, that I guess that that's probably when like I really started to notice you like as a person because I always in high school like I remember being like in some honors classes and stuff um and being like this is a really smart dude and never seeing like a muscular side of, of you and then when you started prepping for a show it was like this old school Dorian Yates bodybuilder coming in and I remember those conversations too because you you watch like um his blood sweat and tears dvds and stuff and it's crazy how like 15 years ago i remember this um but seeing you like 
switch over to like my I took my intelligence and now I'm gearing it towards bodybuilding and um it was always very very inspiring man you know and I love see I love seeing like what I would describe as the underdog like guys that like guys and girls that just aren't genetically gifted or weren't like raised in like fitness and athleticism and like they kind of move into that like it's it's cool to see people who always like were athletic get into it because I feel like they have a step up physically but then like you have these other people that have a step up like mentally like their heart's big um so yeah and that's that's kind of like you know like I, I delved in sports and everything and um I, I how I ended up here is I got into a lot of trouble and um, had some kids and went through, you know, um, a long traumatic experience of like being out there in the streets. Um, and, and at some point in time, at the very end of my um, at the very end of my road, I wound up going to um, inpatient rehab for like six months out in home of Thibodeau area. Um and my oldest son was coming out there to see me when he could. Um, and, you know, I had such a good experience out there um, being isolated and being around some guys who like mirrored what I was like as a person every day and getting to like the root of what made me tick. Um, I almost lived out there, dude. I almost like full time got a job out in Thibodeau and um and my, my oldest son was my motivating factor. I was like, eh, I, I'd rather be at home with my, my son. Um, and I had like the confidence to come back and do that. So, yeah, so I, um, I was on felony probation at the time. I um, graduated that and moved back home. Um, and I started working back in the gyms um, and constantly like strive to do better. Um, you know, and I didn't, I didn't live that life anymore. I made that switch. Um, and I found myself with an ACL tear right when, um, I guess, right when COVID happened, completely blew my knee out. Jeez. Um, and that was kind of a testimony to like where I was in my life too, because, you know, being in massive amounts of pain and having a history with, you know, um, pain medicine and not doing well with it. Um, it was kind of like the, the new Paul was starting to emerge. And I remember going to the doctor and with Heather and being like, look, man, I don't, I don't do good with narcotics. Like, don't give me any pain medicine. Like, I, I don't want to go that route. Um, and this is right when COVID happened. So like, it wasn't like, hey, look, Leah, let's let's put you into surgery next week. They were like, hey, look, we're not doing elective surgeries right now. Um, at the time, I didn't have any insurance or anything like that. So, like, I was coming out of pocket for everything. Um, so, like, there was a good maybe three months that I was just laid up at home. Everything was shut down. And I was just dealing with that, you know, because it's hard. To, it's hard to try to be strong when you only have one working leg, you know, and, you know, any, anybody that is, is injured or has that kind of um, dealing with some type of serious. And, you know, I, I work in the medical field. So like, I, I know that there are people that have situations way worse than that. Um, but the isolation of that, of being stuck at home. And then like, you, you know, what Heather had to deal with, like Heather had to deal with the fact that like, I couldn't, you know, just walk outside to the backyard. I couldn't take care of the baby. The baby was still crawling at the time, you know, like he wasn't even walking. So like that whole process of like being severely injured, not doing any pain medication, um, really like solidified me being a different person. You know, I was like, I'm not that wild drug addict anymore. Like I'm a, a, a father and um, I'm a responsible human being. Mm. And so through all this time, you know, um, I was still working a little bit like the gym, the gym was still doing like some remote stuff. Um, I was waiting for surgery and, um, you know, had had surgery, you know, had a really slow recovery time. Um and, and at the time I got let go from the gym. So like 
unsurety as far as finances go, um, physically, like having to struggle to get through recovery process. Um, and, and it's crazy how God has things in perfect time for people. And, and you just, you know, as humans, we, it's hard for us to comprehend, like, you know, if you ask God for something like he's shipping that package to you, he just doesn't give you a delivery date for that. Um, and through that process, um, I reached out to a family friend for a job. I was like, Hey, look, I have a sales background. I have a fitness background. Like you, you kind of are in that space. Can you, can you help me out? And, and through that, I actually got into like the orthopedic bracing because I was looking for something to kind of get the step up with my recovery from my knee. Um, and through all that, you know, like I started training again as far as the gym goes, because um, I, I didn't want to let that be like the end of it. I, di I didn't want to be 30 and have a bum leg and not train anymore and, and not have a, a successful career, if anything specific. Um, so yeah, how I came to you was I was seeing a patient at Slido Memorial Hospital. Um, and I remember you having the gym and I just never stopped over there. And I remember like right when I had gotten let go from Crossgates. I was, you know, trying to do some marketing. And one of the things I was like, dude, I know, I know a small business owner who operates an awesome gym with some awesome people and he's always had success. So I was just coming back from Sato Memorial and I was like, I got some free time. Let me go pop in on, on Eric and see what's up. Um, and I, I told you this. So like I walk in there and like, you're doing barbell squats, like alone, some heavy ass weight on your back. Um, and, and you just turned around and was like, Hey man, can I give you a hug? Can I hug you? And you know, and this is, I forget, this is at that time where like people weren't shaking hands and hugging anymore, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah. And that's, that's kind of how this started. You, I, you know, you told me that you were getting into not the, not just the fitness side of it, but you wanted to do some type of life coaching. And at the time I was making the jump in my job to a new position. So like I was, I was starting to go out to the field and do sales um, to directly to doctor's offices. Um, me and Heather were looking to make that jump into buying property or a house and changing, you know, our um, lifestyle up. Um, and then I was on the fence of competing at greater golf. And I remember all this stuff. And then he told me, Hey, I'm doing this program. And I, I just, something clicked in me. I was like, that will help me in everything that I'm trying to do. Let me see if Eric will, you know, beta test this with me. And just the fates decided all that, you know, I don't, I, 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 I don't, you, you can't make that shit up. That's the wild part is, so as we, as we speak, I always like to imagine that there's a third person, you know, like that's listening. So then bring them into the conversation. So what's wild is, is we were in, con we were in high school together and we graduated 07. And then there was that little bit of contact with college and getting to know each other afterwards. But man, it had been years. I mean, like five 10 years, somewhere along there in that range of us not seeing each other, very little contact here and there, you know, Facebook. So I remember when you walk in, I was, I was very pleasantly surprised. And, <laughs> you know, he's like, what's Paul doing here? I haven't seen Paul in so long. What's up? And uh, so we were talking and yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. It was beta testing. And I was like, this is so weird because um, I had just had the conversation with Maria about what my plans were for the gym and for exercising and where I wanted to lead to. And it was all very new. And Maria was like, okay, you know, I'm willing to test it if you're beta testing. And then the same thing happened with you and I, this, this opportunity to beta test quote unquote came up, came around. And then, you know, shortly after you and her, it was like three or four more people in a week. So that's how I knew too, that it was time to 
to follow this route because it's 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 able to to help with so much um so what what were you struggling with before the program really um you mentioned you know the acl so you were in on recovery from the acl or, or getting getting past that you were with this position and, and what i found out way later which i didn't i didn't realize was that you were just starting you had been with the company but you were starting this sales position um there was of course getting back physically to where you wanted to go um there's a lot that we hit on but before anything what were you what were you struggling with so i with with all of my big job positions you know like i've been blessed um to come up in a lot of the companies that i worked for um you know i always had and you know i'm not bragging but i always had somebody in these companies okay, that, here. you can brag here so so i've always had somebody somewhere tell me like hey dude like you have the potential to do great things if you just work hard at them and just stay on it and i've always struggled with following through on things you know like it, it took me dude it took me five years to complete an 18 month program on probation you know what i'm saying so like it, it's always since i was younger it's always been like hey i can start off strong but like i never follow through with any of this stuff um and you know i think that has a lot to do with um you know like not staying the path through diversity i mean through um adversity, adversity thank you um and not only that but um not having a purposeful reason for doing things i feel i feel like that what was my was my issue with a lot of things so i started to develop a purpose for all these things and and i didn't know how to get from a to c because i wasn't ever like really good at the b part the the meat and potatoes of these things like i was great at starting them yeah. and then great at not finishing them but i hadn't ever gone through the process so like the things that i was struggling with was okay i have this new sales position that you know i've i've been training for for a year for with the products and with the patients and and now it's my time to go out there and try to insert my helpfulness to the world you know that and that's a Dude, that's an overwhelming task when you have started a new field and, you know, um, you have to go be ready for rejection and obstacles and success. You know that, dude? Yes. I was afraid of being successful because yes. I didn't know. Okay, so let's say they say yes what then you know like and, and and that's i guess that might be a normal person that has like a different mindset might be like i'm afraid of failing i wasn't afraid of failing i've been a failure a lot i i have no problem failing at things you know i'm very very skilled at failing at things i was afraid of being successful at them um Most so that deceive themselves you so know, it's failure but it's really success it is man and um i didn't i didn't know that that was a problem for more than just me like but there are a lot of people out there that that's that secretly that's what they're worried about they're worried about what if everything goes right and then i have to be that person you got you know, it it's like it's like okay well you that okay the package delivered now you have to be that successful salesperson or that successful parent and do it. And I get it. Um, so that was like one of the main things. And then, you know, with the, the recovery from the ACL. So like I was at a point where I was done doing like the therapy side of it. You know, um, I got so busy at work and um, financially I was paying for a lot of therapy out of pocket, which luckily I had a great physical therapist was he was just like, dude, Paul, I just want to help you, man. Like we we don't have we, I, I'll, I'll hook you up. He was like, I'll, I'll hook you up. I want you to get better. I want you to. And I'm very blessed um, that Chase Bennett over at Recovery Physical Therapy like took care of me and and was worried more about getting me back to functionality because this he was a, a divine factor in all of this 
because I know that every time I see somebody locally that I'm like, Hey, who are you doing therapy with? Which that that's pretty much all I see now are patients that are, you know, having to do some type of therapy or bedridden. Um, I'm like, you should go see Chase Bennett. So I was at that point where I was ready to get back into the gym and get athletic again. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I was like, I was dabbling lifting here and there, but I wasn't like, I wasn't consistently hitting the gym, mapping out details, mapping out goals. Like I was kind of just, you know, maybe once or twice a month at the most, um, to, you know, and, and I was, I was very afraid to put that new ACL to the test, man. Like I, I, I'll be honest. I was, I was very afraid to get under that squat bar and I was very afraid to get under that leg press and see if that knee would, would hold together. Um, yeah. So so there was that. And then, you know, me and Heather were just at a crossroads with, you know, financially, we wanted to like move to the next level of, you know, owning our own property and growing our own food and having our own animals and being more self-sufficient and not having to worry about what the world is doing and and being like, hey, look, you know, we know what we need to do as parents. We know what we need to do as um, breadwinners for the household. Like, like what the next step to this is owning some land, growing food, um, raising our own livestock. Like, that's what we want to do. But same thing. I was like, how do I get to that point? Like, I get that I have to have money. Like, that's an easy way to describe, like, wanting to buy more stuff. But, like, what do I need to do at my job with myself to get to that point where I can do that comfortably and I can make that that transition? Um, So there was, like, a lot of change happening at the time. And, I mean, it was just, like, such a relief that, you know, like, the universe was like, all right, we get it. We, you know, you want to do these things. Here is your helping hand. And it, it was you, <laughs> you know, and it wind up being you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of like what we were working on and, and what I like, that's my, my main focus is was, you know, those three things. That's pretty awesome. So as we, as we do this, for those that are listening, not only have we worked together for a good while, I think I, I looked before it, our first date was around January 13th, maybe a little bit before that. And that was like the first official date. That wasn't just the conversation that we had whenever you walked into the gym. Um, what I notice is that through this, this coaching, it is for those who want to level themselves up, right? And it is for those that are going through periods of change because I have some newer clients now or some clients that came after you and they said, you know, I'll start in X amount of time. I'll start next amount of time. I'll start next. So basically they heard about it. Let me wait two or three months till this big thing happens and then we can get into it. And I, and I'll let them know. I'll be like, look, the reason why you're being presented with this now during the big thing is so that you can do well during the big thing. And they'll be like, no, 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 no. I need to handle the big thing first. And, you know, it's like, I need to lose weight before going to the gym. It's like, look, you can do that, but I'm, I'm letting you know, based on the results that other people have had, that you want to do this during the big thing. You want to, because it's going to help shift you. Now, I didn't know that when we first started working together, because this is, I had been studying and working on everything, but it had been a new process to me. So having your openness was vital because, you know, in physical training and personal training, the variables are set. It's like hard advice. Make sure that you're sleeping, make sure you're eating, getting your workouts in, staying hydrated. You know, if you, if you go that route, get into the right mindset, make sure that your, your support system and your community are on board with you. You know, don't put yourself in tempting situations. Well, with this, right, we're dealing with the unconscious mind. So it's a lot more vast yet is a lot more specific at the same time. And um, so what I, found, what I found interesting is as we focused on two or three different little areas of life, right? Relationship, finances, career, there's a lot more that started to flourish as our time together. Um, now, 
before I ask you about that, what was there anything that you were skeptical of? I mean, I had just started this. I got one client. Uh, you mentioned it was life coaching. I couldn't really give you many details. I was like, look, Paul, we're going to meet week by week. This is good. I have a process. It's just, I, I don't know what it's dependent. So was there anything skeptical or like, I don't know about this or, or anything like that before starting? Absolutely. So, <laughs> so I mean, you got to understand, like, for, I, I, I guess, you know, you, you know, I hadn't seen you in over a decade as a person, just, you know, like you got to understand like the trust, trust with people, you know, like trusting people with your money, trusting people with your life, trusting people with your, you know, vulnerability. Um, Cause if you're on in this program, if you're honest, you are picking out the things in your life that either cause you the most pain, unsurety, you know, like overwhelming tasks. And, you know, a lot of people don't want to, um, they don't want to get down to the root of it and say, Hey, look, dude, like I need help with these things. Um, so not only that, but the fact that you were like in the beta testing version of it, like hadn't successfully done anything like to me, other than what I knew of your social media presence of, of you as a person, like I went off of just trusting you as a person alone. Like, cause I, you didn't have any, like you didn't have any clients for this yet. You were You're like, yeah. yeah. So, and, and not only that, but like when we first started out, it was like, you know, trickling information of like, Hey, this is the outline that I'm thinking of. Not like, Hey, look, this is the outline of the program. This is where we'll finish. It was like, this is the outline that I'm thinking of, you know? And I, I think that was really cool too, because, you were open to taking our feedback as, as clients to a coach and saying, Hey, what do you think about this? And um, so, yeah, completely skeptical. And not only that, but um, you know, the things that you were promising and that you knew deep down in your heart that would work, you know, it, it's hard for somebody in the struggle of things to believe that like you can have some like miraculous things happen in your life, like through that time period. And not only that, but to, to say, okay, I'm, I am going to make these miraculous things happen by my will and brain power, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it seems like voodoo, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, but as you, as you have these things physically come to fruition while you're doing this type of coaching, it alleviates all that. Like I remember the, like the, the first plant that sprouted the first person out in the field that told me, yes, like the first workout that went successfully, I remember being like, okay, it's been, it's only been three weeks that I've done something different, but look at all these, you know, successes or like, look at, look at the things that we just, you know, um, did that subconscious training on that physically manifested itself. Mm. And that's, I was, and that's when I personally was just like, man, I let's go, let's do it. Like, and hopefully somebody out there will trust that the the testimonies from your first clients should be proof that those things that you sign up for there's an unlimited amount of growth that can happen in a short period of time and and i'm like to have things in your life make a complete switch in three months like do people work 20 30 years for that you know, yes. it can happen in three months. Mm, you, you just gave me goosebumps, bro. I want to be like, use my coupon code, Paul D01 <laughs> or O2. <laughs> you gave me right. goosebumps because it's true. It can happen so quick. And to, 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 to highlight three weeks and he was in three weeks. Right. And then, OK, so this is a, this is a really good point. And then we're going to really dive in. What was your first big breakthrough from the program and some quick wins that you had? 
Um, so, okay. Uh, and it can I be, had, it can be multiple because I know there's, there's quite a bit. Okay. So I had some volunteer potato plants sprout out of my compost pile. That was like the first thing that I just moseyed over to my compost pile because I knew that I would need some type of fertilizer that I didn't have to buy. And I was like, look at these plants. What is that? And it was potato scraps that I had thrown in there that were just like thriving. So that was one of the first things. Um, and then um, Heather, Heather starting to come to the gym with me like that. That was another thing. Um, because we're, you know, we're, we, she, it's crazy too. She worked at the gyms. Like she knows, she knows how to exercise and like, she knows a lot about like muscle groups and, and just naturally being around that, that field of like what I need to do, like, like awesome client as a trainer. Yeah. Um, so that was another thing. And then um, people started telling me yes at, at work, you know, mm. like I had like big physician groups tell me like, yeah, you can come bring us lunch, you know, that, and those three things, I was like, holy shit. I remember with your own body. So hitting the physical, well, I remember cause you said Heather. So I remember with Heather, not that there was trouble in the relationship in any way, but there could have been better communication. And that started happening right off the bat. There were habits that both of y'all wanted to see the other start to perform in the sense of it would be better for health and relationship to do these particular actions and habits. And simply from you noticing different things and then commenting on them in the relationship, and then also her noticing different things of you taking care of yourself better also brought improvements to the relationship too. So the reason why I say that is um, through this time period, it wasn't just you that improved. It was those around you, even mom, dad, and brother, you got to get better connections with them too, right? Yeah. So my, you know, my, like my mom and dad, you know, specifically my dad um, started having some health issues, you know, and it's, it's crazy because like my mom and dad are in their seventies and they, could still keep up with me like there dude there's some shit that my dad can do he's got that old man strength like you know um but they're also at a point where you know mom's been lifting like lifting for 40 plus years you know she's she's got severe damage in her knees you'd never know this but she's not, like i don't think she has like um acl's healthy in her knees like i'm pretty sure it's just like a lot of bone on bone but like so they started having some some issues with their health my mom was one of the first ones she was like i know what i need to do i know exactly what i need to do so like mom just randomly started like i saw her cutting carbs um you know i saw her like being more uh, protein centric and i hope that's because that's what i was preaching to her she she got to a point where i think she saw me start like going ham again in the gym and start putting on some muscle. And I think that it reminded her of her heyday. Um, yeah. But, you know, and you know, like the show that I'm doing is the one that she won twice in 84 and 85 in women's open bodybuilding and the same promoters are doing it. Um, but seeing her, you know, start picking the meat out of foods, start picking the carbs out of foods and start seeing her physically change. Cause you know, she responded very quickly to doing that like when she started just like going back to whole foods and and meat and vegetables like her body changed completely um i know she feels better so like yeah you know like we're we what you and i were doing was indirectly starting to affect other people in my life and and especially you know um heather like like dude so we just started vibing as a team so hard like as far as like you know just taking care of the baby and stuff at home and stuff with work and everything like dude like so I was having to start to drive like way 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 down into Thibodeau New Orleans into Gulfport Biloxi like um you know like she was so helpful with being like hey look you know like you got a v6 I got a v4 you want to switch cars this day 
oh, you know, and stuff like that. And just, you know, being, being like, okay with there being days where I was like, I gotta go to the gym and her being like, okay, I'll take care of Emmett. I got you, you know? And, and then like that shift with me where, I, you know, she was like, Hey, I want to come do legs with me. And I was like, all right, well, you come, come on, like you and the baby, come on. And, and it, you know, it, it's just, it was amazing to see like that type of shift at home, you know? And, and like you said, it wasn't that there was like a huge problem before, dude, like I got a really stable relationship. Um, but you know, when you start to add in like big time, it, like big time obstacles that you're trying to do, like there's tension, you know, like when you start a new job and there's less time and somebody has got to take care of a baby and then you got, another kid that's coming into the mix like dude it, it, like we stay busy um so yeah that it was um it was like a a breath of fresh air you know that's awesome that may and it makes such the difference when you can communicate and there's not <laughs> headbutting or tension or pulling one way or going you know harmony makes harmony makes for for helpful situations um so and I, I remember too that you and dad have a business together or there, there's something along those lines, you do work together and a job popped up from first time in months that that ended so, up happening. So like not, ev not even like, so my dad is completely retired from, from doing lifts and stuff like that. Like he, you know, so my grandfather opened up a compressor and hydro off lift business and my dad and my uncle ran it for you know 20 something years and my dad just completely retired after Katrina and my uncle took on that business and when I had moved home from home in Thibodeau you know like dude I didn't have anything like I didn't have a car I didn't have nothing man all the only thing I had was the support from my family like that was it um and Heather too you know that's when Heather and I ran into each other not ran into each other I, I purposely went to the gym so I could see her but um she knows that nice. so we all do now no <laughs> <laughs> so um we, like that's what I did you know dude and it was like completely like humbling because like my mom and dad had to bring me to work to meet up with my uncle my uncle would take me on these jobs you know we would fix and repair lifts and everything um and that at the time you know like I was really debating like if, if I can learn how to do this as a skill set you know I could potentially own this business one day and that that be you know how I provide for my family and I could continue the legacy that my grandfather had done um and it got really hard as far as like um transportation you know like because my mom and dad were having to get up in the morning and bring me to different places in new orleans because i didn't have a car um it, it just got really difficult on everybody you know um and it, it wound up not working out that way so i stopped doing that completely and you know i was working part-time at the gym and that's when you know at, at the same time they were kind of like hey look like you you've been a general manager of a gym before like you're working part-time at the front desk like do you want to do something more than this um and you know that was the same thing like Vanessa Louie over at Crossgates was like dude like you can do more than what you're doing like come on man um yeah. so I transitioned into that and I put the list stuff down like I just wasn't doing anything anymore um and just yeah so my dad being retired, but not being able to not work. He's just not that type of person. Um, he's got the knowledge of, you know, he can install these lifts just by looking at them and looking at the shop and being like, all right, I know exactly what we need. Right. When do you want to do it? So just randomly out of nowhere, I get a call from a 985 number um, that I didn't answer because I don't answer random numbers. I don't know. Um, and it's, it, yep. And dude, I just, I, 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 if it's like a, a patient, I know the number calling. Um, so this guy calls me, he's like, Hey man, 
I heard that y'all install lifts and I was like, well, actually that's, you know, my uncle owns that business. Um, he was like, yeah, I talked to him. Um, this is something small at my house that, you know, it's not going to be for commercial uses. Um, and you know, like my uncle, he services like the, the big main dealerships in New Orleans. Like he's, a, he's busy dude. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm like, semi comfortable with doing this but i gotta like recruit some help from my dad um and it's cool how he heard about me was my boy joey Steele over at crossgates um and joey's got his own like crazy testimonial like that dude is like lucky he survived an elevator crash and now he like holds state powerlifting records survived an elevator crash had to relearn how to walk man like he, he's just like lucky he's not a hemi or paraplegic um he somehow remembered that that's what i did when i first started working at crossgates and was like i know somebody you can call so this dude called me hmm. and dude it, it took us a couple afternoons but um me and my dad put this lift in for this guy and i remember telling him like hey look if you you're in the cars and stuff. If you run into somebody that wants to put a lift in at their house or they want something small, like, you know, um, hit me up. And then like three weeks later, he did. He was like, Hey, I got somebody else that has a lift that they got. Hmm. You want somebody to install it. Like, what? How did this happen? Like that was that that was complete. Like I, I did not market anything like that. I did not like initiate any of that. Like that just happened during my coaching. Two jobs and you have not had any months prior to that. No years. It was like two years. dude. Wow. I, I hadn't, I hadn't worked with my uncle in like two years. Wow. 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 <laughs> so stuff like that, that's the kind of stuff that I like to highlight too. Cause with Maria, she had a few things. So within the first few weeks that starts to happen, the workouts start to end up being completely different. We had conversations of how certain, um, certain stacking, certain ways of doing, shit, I can't think of the right word. Um, the structure of your workouts ended up changing because certain ways of doing it caused pain. And instead of doing what caused you pain, you listen to the body and we're able to hit it at different angles for more optimal, more optimal workouts. So I was starting to journal like, so, and, and I was starting to journal a lot of things like, you know, <laughs> Heather, Heather said something last night too. She was like, well, maybe if you're not journaling like a 13 year old girl, you'd have more time. Um, so I like I was starting to journal like sleep patterns. I was starting to journal workout patterns. I was starting to um, you like can say, you can tell her document. I'm documenting, doc basically. documenting. Document. Yeah, it's very scientific. Yeah, um, and you want our kids to be successful. Like exactly, they need something to read. <laughs> like oh yeah, and I've been writing a journal for Emmett too. He just doesn't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was starting to like document things. I was starting to make like next day goals, weekly goals, like stuff that I had to, you know, I, at one point in time, you know, I had like three different calendars that I was all operating out of. Um, so yeah, I had, I was like starting to do that and I was starting to like prioritize body parts that I had always had a problem with. I was like, okay, like I definitely have to get my, my quad on my left side back to normal. I like my arms need to be big. I've always had like super long inserts. Um, not, not, good bellies in my arms. Um, so like, so I was starting to like prioritize these things and, um, track like order of exercises. And I started noticing like specific things that were happening in these workouts where like severe inflammation was starting to come on in my elbows. Um, and, and tracking them, I was able to like write notes next to them. Like, did this exercise fine did this exercise 
caused a lot of pain. And I was able to like switch those exercises up, remove them, put them into. And I started to notice like just the way that I was training certain things wasn't being beneficial to where like halfway through the workout, I was just like dealing with the pain. And there's no way that you can like successfully contract and expand muscles if you're just hurting the whole time. You know, like you still have to have enough like focus in there to like flex and be comfortable with it. So yeah, I started noticing a difference. And then I started noticing like days I would work out and I wouldn't have any elbow pain, which for me, that was amazing. Cause I remember like the last couple of years of like when I was getting big, wanting to compete, I was like having a lot of little aches and pains in my joints and having those workouts change and that pain go away. I was like, holy shit. It's so awesome to do arms and not have any elbow pain whatsoever. And then I started noticing like growth and I was like, oh, wow. Not only am I having pain, but I'm actually getting some hypertrophy in this. Like, so yeah. And like just things that I like, not only was hesitant about doing before I had tore my ACL, but things that I was definitely hesitant about doing afterwards, man. I just, I remember like, getting the courage to be like, you know what, dude, like I need to get under a barbell and I need to squat to the floor and back up. And I remember doing that on the Smith machine and no weight whatsoever. And the inspiration and empowerment that that gave me to squat all the way down to my calf and come back up, dude, I was like, I was stoked. I remember like, dude, like tears stoked. And what's crazy too is like, I got a sick pump from getting underneath the Smith machine with no weight and doing, you know, 60 reps. Right. And I was like, wow, dude, like I can, I I can, I can get my leg back to where it was before. Um, So yeah, like there was, there was stuff like that, dude, that, like I said, man, tear jerkers in the gym. And anybody that's like either like got on the scale and see the amount of weight they lost or like you show them their before and after picture. And they like, you know, fucking weep. <laughs> um. So what's what's so interesting I hear from, and this is just, we're just talking the first few weeks right here. You already noticed a difference with your approach to career and business and how you uh, got into the, the networking and getting, you know, the sales portion, which we can hit on a little bit more here in a second the relationships in your life, father, partner improved. We didn't eat mother improved. We didn't even talk about Bruce and how that's improved. Um, you noticed a difference with your green thumb right off the bat and how you wanted to start uh, growing food and seeing how the potatoes ended up happening in the compost. And then one of the biggest ones I think, which quite a few people experienced as well and thinking about Rhonda's results um, the body starts to heal and the body starts to change and you don't lo- you no longer tolerate the pain that was in the body, but you start to notice it and say, is this something that I want to continue having? And you start doing something about it. Um, any, anything right off the bat. So those quick results, those first breakthroughs, any more of those coming up or, or you're remembering any of them? Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned in Bruce too, like me and my brother were at a point where we just didn't speak like, um, we weren't talking at all, like no communication whatsoever. And um, how long had that been? <laughs> that was like, there was like a good three month period, you know, three or four months where we just like, he didn't, I think that he blocked me or, or something like we just didn't talk. And I remember him, you know, being like, Hey, look, don't, don't talk to me anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and, and, you know, like he was in a certain place in life and I was in a certain place in life where I was like, look, dude, do you want to talk to me? It's cool, man. I'm doing, I'm doing the right things. It is what it is. You know, if you don't want to hear about it, 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 you know, if that shit bothers you, whatever, you know? Uh, And I, and I remember when you get to a point in your life where like separating yourself from things isn't so traumatic where you can be like, you can confidently be like, Hey, look, I know I'm on the right path and, and God the universe is going to move and add things as needed and, and being, being okay with that 
you want to talk about empowering, man. It makes all the difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Because, you know, it, it's before that, like I would have, you know, I would have just sat and thought about that all day long, all day, every day. Like my brother won't talk to me, you know, and it wasn't, it wasn't like that. And, um, so yeah. And just, um, it's hard to go back to, I mean, I can probably like rewatch some of my, um, my other videos and, and tell you, but yeah, dude, there, there were a lot of things that just like, boom happened, you know, like I, it, it was right around the time where, you know, like, um, you know, I think Bruce just came and apologized to me one day, like, was just like, dude, sorry, you know, like, I, I miss you, you know, and, and I was like, completely, what's cool is that usually like, I'm like, in the past, I've been very vengeful towards things like, dude, if something went wrong, or we had a burnt bridge, like, I would always feel that tension. But like, my, you know, I kind of just like got rid of that. And I understand that, like, there have been people that have forgiven me for things that I shouldn't have been forgiven for. And um, I was kind of just like, all right, that's cool, bro. It's all good. Like, this is what I'm still doing, you know, and we just were able to move past that. And like now, you know, me and Bruce talk all the time and he's writing music again that he sends to me. Um, and he seems like he's in a really good place, um, which, you know, it's such a relief to to know that like your family is doing right for themselves when they're not around you know um, yeah. it makes all the difference you know there's like a there's like a, a safety feeling within yourself like I don't have to worry I'm gonna I know that they'll be okay and they're gonna take care of themselves kind of thing yeah 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 and that was it was cool you know um but yeah that that was like some of the main stuff that happened like right off the bat and um things things were just starting to like move into you know a realm of that i just didn't think was was possible at the time you know i just had i had never like really thought that those type of things could happen or would happen you know and especially like right in front of your face very quickly it's it's really wild it's really, really wild because of what we touch on, right? And um, so I, I remember too, when we first started, somewhere along the lines, I was like, just, just wait for your results. And you, I know that you, you count your, your chickens once the eggs have hatched, right? So there's no point in saying I'm going to have 10 when I don't have 10, right? And so you start seeing the results. Those are the ones that come right off the bat. The next question that I got for you is, what have been your specific results from the coaching and the program? So as you tell us more about that, if there's any that come up, I'm going to look through some of our notes because you had some badass quotes through our time together. And I'm going to find those and let some people know about those. Advice. Yeah. So you, um, you and your note taking definitely captured some things in the moment. Um, Cause I remember we had like, you know, you always have these moments, especially in these coaching sessions where like shit gets real and, deep and it might it might be for five minutes it might be for 15 but like it just gets really deep um but i, I do like specifically man like i have with with work you know i told you i i have had more orders and accounts join up in work in april than i did through the entire first three months so like is it okay if i give the exact numbers of orders yeah 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 because i think we did it in January, he had 10 orders exact. That's when we, we started. In February, he had five. In March, he had seven. In April, he had 20. Boom. Pretty much tripled just like that. Yep. That's why. Yep. And it, it's cool, too. It's because, like, you know, like, we started in January. So, like, it wasn't just, like, this immediate thing. Like, so there was three months where I was just, like, grinding out there, you know, you know, my, and my boss kept telling me like, dude, just keep knocking on the door, man. Just keep knocking on the door. Um, like keep answering that dinner bell. So for three months, I didn't have like a huge boost. We were just working. And, um, then in April, I, I remember looking at the numbers and being like, Oh, what, what? So yeah, that, that was, 
that was huge. That's, and that's one of the things that you, we talked about was, uh, Maria had such good success with business. You weren't sure if that, if you'd be able to see that because you had just started this, um, the sales portion. And, and I knew that there was some skeptics, skeptics, skepticism there and some things as far as identity and values that we worked through and um, that you worked through and, and it, it worked out so much well, so much better. Just these first couple of weeks, real quick, uh, he noticed that his stress was down. You were becoming more resourceful. You were becoming comfortable with talking more, much greater awareness. Your reaction times were changing. You knew your core values. This was a big one connected to work. After nine months of reaching out some, to somebody within 20 days of us working together, that person hit you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I nine months. And then this is a big one too, before you tell us about that. It's better being... It's better being wild sober than it is being a little fucked up. That's one of the things that you said too. It's true, man. It really is. Cause you get to, um, you know, like when you're not full of drugs, like the, you get to feel like all the good and the bad stuff going on. Um, and, and it's, it's a different dynamic as far as like your thought process, because like you have to like process that pain and figure out what you're going to do with it, you know, mm. like, and, and it, it's just like, you know, all the motivational videos say, dude, like, man, you can let that shit break you or you can use that and fuel whatever you have going on in your life. And I have had a lot of pain and I have a lot of fuel, <laughs> you know, and, um, and like, that's what, dude, that's one of the things I just needed help to like, to get that engine going and to start using that in the right direction. Um, and then when the good things do happen, it means so much more, mm. you know? Um, but yeah, that, so I remember what you're talking about and I really can't mention specifics with it, but yeah, I had been, um, I had been chasing this lady down for almost a year. Like, and, and when I say chasing down, I mean like knocking on the door, popping in, calling, emailing, like the whole nine, you know, borderline harassment. But I knew I had, but I knew I had something to offer, you know, and I knew that if, if I could get that meeting, that somebody was going to benefit from it, you know, and, and just randomly after like, yeah, right in that first month, I just randomly got an email. And that, that's when I was like, we are transcending space and time with what, we're, with what we're doing. I was like, this stuff is reaching out like farther in my life than I thought that we were going to do, you know? So not only did I have the people close to me, but like I had people that didn't even know me yet, like hadn't even met me yet. I, I was just an, a name and an email or a card in the door, like, be like, yeah, sure, I'd meet you. And then I got to a point where I was like, I know exactly what I need to do when you meet me. Like, mm -hmm. I need, and I remember telling you this, like, dude, if, like, I knew that if I just came as Paul, like, the person that's wanting to help people and benefit mutual parties, that it would be cool. Mm. It's all about the intent. Yeah. Yeah, I knew I knew that my intentions were all good. Like, you know, e even the fact that, yes, it's a business and like I'm trying to make money, but like the money is going to support my family and going towards things that are going to help my family. And yeah. and not only that, but like I knew that if they let me work with some patients that like it's going to it might Maybe the products don't work out, but their day will be better because I'm going to make sure that I love them when I'm in front of them. Mm. And I just, I just knew that. So like those conversations are different when you you're purposeful and you know, you're intentioned, you know, and that was. And that separates you from so many people, you know, from those that are just trying to make the sale to those that are trying to make someone's life better right? Like makes all the difference. Um, a couple of more things that call out to me when we anchored, 
you said it was really helpful, the resources, it felt like some past, um, some past usage of, of things, right? Like the positivity and the joy and the feelings that you felt from one of the exercises and tasks that we had, um, it allowed you to continue to increase your, uh, what's, what's the best way to, to say it? Increase your, your results because here it says a lot's coming to fruition, uh, one month full speed into your orthopedics. It went well because you got to know them on a personal level, confidence, competence through the structure. You're being a scientist with things. Um, and one of them that called out whenever you were speaking was the connection that you got to make with some friends. Um, oh, so wait, 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 before you get that, okay. you that right. I just found the lessons. I just found the lessons. Come as you are and it will be fine. The level of expansion, this is what Paul said on March 17th. The level of expansion is directly correlated to the level of awareness that you have of yourself. And the level of awareness is the level of expansion of self. I'm not going to repeat it again because you can re-listen to this. Boundaries came to build between people and the world were completely false and we are all kind of intermingled and we all have our fingers on the cord if we want to play the right tune. That's <laughs> it. That's yeah. it. I also need to stop thinking. Paul said this. This is a good one. This, I'm probably going to use this as content, Paul. I also need to stop thinking. My thought process doesn't serve me at all. There should not be a thought. There should be a flow of delight. There shouldn't be a process. There shouldn't be a process. Processes are premeditated notions of bullshit and thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. It's all, it's all, it's, dude, the, the amount of bullshit that I used to tell myself still, I mean, dude, I'm not perfect. I, 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 pra I practice, I practice, you know, not being attached to those things. But like, man, the amount of bullshit that we tell ourselves and then, then we go and live our lives off of that stuff, it's nonsense. It's really nonsense. And like that, I encourage anybody to like reprogram how they talk to themselves, you know, and, and that's, that's one of the things that I started developing through this coaching. Like I became way more of a supporter of Paul and, and not only that, but I started giving myself the respect and my thoughts that I wanted to give out to other people. You know, like I, I started, um, I started congratulating my wins, you know, and not guilt tripping my failures, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I think that dude, that's one thing that I definitely rubbed off from you to me because, like you would just like start off with what happened and you would like applause, you know, like that's how we started all these sessions. And, it, you know, it just really, it's, it's wild how that shift, if you're around the right person and have the right coach, how that can, you know, like you just, it just translates over, you know. And I don't know if we mentioned this, you never had a coach before me in this capacity, right? This was like no. brand new to the whole process. No, man. I mean, like I, I started out with like, you know, and I always said this to people, like I told them I would never have a trainer or a coach, mm. you know, cause I was like, you know, like there, there are things that I can discover about myself that, you know, if you're in tuned, other people can't teach you. And then like my shift was like, that is such an, arrogant way to think about shit like to to not remain teachable um so i just started with like i bought a bunch of books and it was just about random things that i like thought were interesting like manage your day-to-day -day, uh, manage your habits you know manage your marketing like and i was just reading and then that's when i was like dude like the learning process has not stopped. There are many, many, many things that I can become better at and constantly work on. Um, and that's, you know, like coaching with an actual person was even better because like 
you have that live interaction of of feelings and um feedback and like you know like when you're reading like your feedback is your own of, of what other some somebody else is saying but like they can't like retort to your thought process but like with coaching it's like dude you have immediate like hey look that shit sounds really good or that sounds really wrong let's run with that um you know so like you're creating these new chapters in your own book wow what a what a great what a great sentence that you just said there because another thing that paul said on 324 was i feel like i just closed a chapter that i've been living in too long oh my god yeah man like i remember go ahead go ahead it was it, dude it was right around that time you remember i told you i put on the scrub shirt <laughs> i'm looking at that right now <laughs> you remember? i do i, I do I, I remember going uh, 324. Uh, I was on the 24th mark. <laughs> I remember going from thinking like I'm this person without the right background with all of these like fuck ups and complications and um and these doubts and insecurities and I remember one day like I finally put on that scrub shirt and was like, you know, I'm a medical sales rep. I'm a good father. Um, I have good things to offer to the world. Um, I'm not done with my physical career. You know, I'm not, I have things that I am going to accomplish. I remember just putting that shirt on dude was like putting the Superman cape on. And I was just like, wow. I, you know, like I really, I'm not that same guy anymore. Like, and and it wasn't, it wasn't like wishful thinking. It was like deep down, I felt like a different version of myself. And, and it was more like, because when we first started, we did that visual, visualization of the best version of me. And I felt like I had finally stepped into that skin. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, this, that, that day was like, yeah, dude, it was just like so, so different for me. And, you know, like I, I'm blessed enough that I get to work in Gulfport and Biloxi. So like I, I was like driving on um, on the coast when I was thinking about that. And it was just like such a moving experience, man. Like I, I wish I wish everybody would get to feel like themselves stepping into the person that they want to be, mm. you know, shit. Mm. Amazing, mm. man. Mm. Oh, and so, oh my God, Paul, it's so good. So not only did you have this experience with yourself, right? Where it was like, oh, I'm doing it. I'm stepping in. But there was at least two other experiences where this, well, more than that, but the two that I'm thinking of where you got to really step in and see yourself. One of them involved the godmother of your first son. You randomly saw her after a couple of weeks and the last time that you ended up seeing her, you weren't in such a great place. And then now it was a completely different experience. Yeah. The yep. other and experience, I, I want you to dive into both if you're okay with that. The other experience was with all your boys and not having to have seen them in so long. So if you don't mind diving in just to a little bit of, of that. So I, I hope you have a pause button on this. I got to pee. Cause I, yeah, drink I do a I bunch do. of water. I'm pause right. real quick. We'll pause. Okay. All right. So yes. So dive diving into those um those two situations. So through high school, yeah, I had a clique of three friends and myself. Like, dude, we did it. We did everything together. We literally like lived together. We like grew up into the people that I guess we are today now together. Like um, we always had each other's backs. It was very like, it was a brotherhood, man. Like these guys know me just as well, if not better than my own family does, because they, you know, they saw the side of me that was good and bad. Um, and um, so after high school and everything, um, when I when I went down that route, I, I found myself living in Mobile, um, not in the best place as far as like 
mental state, all this stuff. Um, and I, I had a huge falling out with all these guys. And, and it kind of was just like one of them found out what was going on and pretty much was like, dude, look, Paul's off the rocker. Like, and that, that was a rap, man. Like, um, that was back in 2011, 2012. Yeah. So I, I really like didn't hear or see these guys. Um, and I remember the first, the, the first one, one I saw was Jason, Jason, yeah. um, his son was at summer camp with me and, you know, he would have to come in and pick his kid up. And I think that was the first, the first one out of those three that was like, Paul's kind of not, you know, the same guy that we left off with in 2011, 2012. Um, you know, and I kept, I kept like hoping that one day he would like mention to Jeff and Steve, like that I miss them and that I wanted to talk to them and that, you know, like we still had that same bond as before. And, you know, like if they just gave me a chance that like, they would see that, like, I'm, I'm the type of person you want in your life. Um, so I remember just, I kept like making comments to, to Jason, like, Hey dude, like hit Jeff up, give him my number, tell him to talk to me, you know, hit Steve up, give him my number, tell him to talk to me. Um, and out of the blue, I think that, um, either Jeff texted me or Jeff called me and, um, my son had a baseball tournament in Hammond and um, we were like, Hey dude, we're like, why don't we meet up somewhere, you know, and just, and just talk. I got my family with me. Like we got, you know, um, and I, and I remember him telling me when he saw me, he was like, you remind me of your dad. And to me, that was like the biggest compliment in the world, yeah. you know? Cause like my dad is like, super great guy you know and like he he's never it, I, everybody i've ever met has been like your dad's a good guy a great guy you know um, so like when he told me that i was like must be doing something right if i remind him of pops um so like we we started like just talking about things and like it's crazy too because um I, i'll have to he had um I don't want to violate HIPAA and stuff like this. Yeah. He had some, some medical stuff going on that I, I was involved with the doctor and everything. So like there, there was an area where I was like, Hey dude, like we're kind of in the same boat, you know, um, like I can help. And that kind of like rekindled everything. Cause we were starting to talk about the gym and like positive thinking and motivation. Um, yeah. so like, probably a month a month or two into our coaching like we all got together and hung out for the first time in like a decade like 10 years wow and it was it was just so cool because it was like it was at jason's house like he's successful enough in his life that you know like his family has a solid foundation um and like i was able to bring my son and you know, like we were all able to just like, and it's crazy too. When I say like transcend space and time, it's kind of just like, it wasn't any different from before minus the fact that like, I, I would say that we're all doing really well, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, it was cool to kind of, kind of see that, like there was that immediate hesitation of like, I remember Steve even saying like, Oh, we're going to have to get used to being around each other again. And I was like, nah, no, we don't. It like, it's it's there's no different um and just the fact that that came to fruition like right when we were doing that coaching is just like mind-blowing because i was like dude I, you know like they had they had like labeled me like a, an insufficient friend you know for a decade like this dude not who you want to be around and um then we you know got more into you know how we were doing and everything is it was just wild how like we all co-mingled through something like like jason's son was at the summer camp jeff was going through his medical stuff um you know like we all had something going on um that kind of like co-mingled us like those strings were still attached 
and now, you know, but we got a group text message where we, you know, talk to each other and, and it's, it's kind of just like back how we were 10 years ago. You know, like if, if I needed something, I could probably reach out to one of them and they would come help me. Um, and it goes both ways. Like if they hit me up, I was like, Hey man, I need this. I need that. I'm like, Oh hey, I'm in a position where I can actually give something to this relationship. Um, so that was really cool. And then, yeah, uh, running into my uh, oldest son's godmother that was another that was just trippy dude so I was at um, one of the hospitals in New Orleans and I had just um, gone to make a sales call and I was just like marking stuff in my calendar sitting in my front seat and this girl pulled up next to me and she looked like semi-familiar but you know from a side view I couldn't really um, couldn't really tell but then when she got out the car, I was like, oh, my God, that's Brian's godmother. And I started talking to her and um, she saw like the car seat in the back and was like, she so got another kid. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we got a little three year old. He's awesome. Um, and I got to catch up with her and everything. And like the, just thinking about how she probably last saw me as like a crazy 22 year old, like in no position to raise any type of children, let alone myself, um, like still actively addicted to like all sorts of drugs. And, um, I had like nothing solid in my life at the time. And then just, just, you know, just knowing that, like she caught me at my job, work in notice that I have a child that I successfully raise every day, you know? Um, and just that, that whole conversation, like it was just so cool. Cause I was like, damn, like that's, I totally shed that skin of that person. Like, and I can, I can like, honestly say that like, I'm in a great position, you know, it was just wild. So and out of all the parking spots, dude, out of all the hospitals that I go to, out of all the times, out of like all of that stuff, you know, and that's like when, when we were talking earlier about like miraculous things, I was just like, dude, there's no way. And when she pulled up next to me, I was like, nah, not possible. And I was like, I was like, are we really like, attracting that sort of goodness and stuff in our life that like things like that are happening maria said it so well the other day i didn't think it was possible on the the, the podcast um i didn't think it was possible to work towards my goals and clear my shit at the same time and then i figured out through this process that in order to get to my goals and to get to my goals faster i have to clear my shit so once as we were going towards the goal and then once we did all the clearings and we got everything good, it was just like, man, things started accelerating even more because I don't have all this shit that is holding me back anymore that I, that I, that I kept on me. And it's, and, and we, we figured out how to say it. These things just so happen to happen during the coaching process. Not that there was potential they couldn't happen before or after, but it just so happened that many crazy, amazing, miraculous things happened during this time. And one of the reasons for that listener that you can hear is because what we do is we move ourselves, the, the client moves themselves, Paul moved himself from being the effect in his life, being the affected, everything affects him to being the cause. This is what I'm going to make happen. This is what I want to see. I want to have better relationships. I want to have better work work production i want to feel better in my skin i want a different body and when he decided to use his intention and his will in order to move forward the universe started responding right and the reasons for that you'll have to go through the coaching in order to find out but <laughs> but with that it naturally starts to happen even if you don't know the reasons if you're willing to start moving yourself in that in that way so paul we're, we're winding down here, um, the past review. So at the end of all the clearing, before we start moving into getting your smart goals on task, right? One of the things that we do is we review everything that you did. And so one of the things that you said when we reviewed was it feels 
like every like what we addressed, what we talked about, over 50% of that was taken care of in our coaching process. And I would imagine since it's been a month since we've really stopped like deliberate coaching, that even more has has taken place, like with paint plants, with the pups, with property, with work. When I asked you if the problem was gone, you said it's gone, it's completely eradicated based on what was said. You don't have to protect yourself anymore. I should care for myself. That's protecting myself. Mainly external problems and none of that killed me. The stuff that you did, it was so fear-based when you started. And you said, I should be afraid of all the shit I know I could do. And now you see yourself as abundant. And before you saw yourself as, of course you felt inadequate is what you said. All this stuff manifested through going through it. All this stuff manifested going through it. Subconscious playing a bigger role than expected. Subconscious training did a lot more than expected. Connections were made. You're already seeing returns. Huge connections are being made, felt, innovative new ideas are coming into play. You continue to do what you need to do. Allow conversations to happen themselves. Not repeating old patterns. Um, feeling freedom to say fuck it if you don't want to do something instead of like having to do it. So with all that, sir, um, anything else to add or is coming up as far as results or something along those lines? So whenever, whenever we did all that clearing, um, it, it's wild how your subconscious can remember things so vividly and, and reattach you to them so quickly if you have the right type of coaching to get there. Um, so just imagine if somebody told you like, hey, we're going to go through your past and we're going to clear all that negative shit out of your life. And when you come back out of it, you're not going to have that anymore. And not only that, but we're going to go back and we're going to find all those positive things that make you be the light that you are. And we're going to make sure that those are in the forefront of your mind. And that's I was totally hesitant about it because, like, to my knowledge, the only way to do that was through like some serious hallucinogens and not through types of meditation or hypnosis or anything like that. And I remember after I started like actually using the anchors at point in points in my day being like, wow, we really just like rooted all those good things about my past in my mind. And I don't feel like I'm so like succumbed to all these negative feelings about things that happened back in the day. Um, mm. And I, I, I really think that that has a, a large portion of it because like now it's kind of like the old like ball and chains aren't with me and like I get to wake up every day and it's like you know I get to do me and I'm gonna make that whatever you know I want to make it and if I don't want to do something like my survival rate is a hundred percent I'm either gonna do it or not do it whatever's best for me you know I loved when you you mentioned that on one of our calls my survival rate's a hundred percent and I've been batting I've been batting a thousand on bad days, you know, I've survived every single one of them. So I've been doing pretty good with, with that aspect and hearing that, cause I didn't hear it before, you know, the first couple of weeks, but when I started, when you started saying it, I was like, man, he's shifting, he's shifting big time. He's shifting to the point where he's no longer, I mean, if you're overwhelmed, you're overwhelmed. There was, there was one week I remember we, 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 it was really challenging and it was really challenging because so many other things weren't lining up in place that you had been doing before. You know, life happens. Um, but whereas one way you would have reacted in the past, you didn't react that way. You just saw what needed to be done, what, what needed to be fixed in a sense, course corrected, and you course corrected it just like that. It wasn't any more you know, woe is me, let me spend all day thinking about it. It was ABC, XYZ, move on. Yeah, like I remember that week too, man. Like, the, like, like it, it, it wasn't all just like sunshine. Like there was work that needed to be done. And I remember, you know, like I had a week that I was just struggling with that, you know, like stinking thinking, um, scheduling, just like not feeling great. And I remember like journaling, like the shit that was making me feel bad and like 
Uh oh, you froze up. Already. Pulling that stuff out and being like, all right, how can I replace that with things I know are feel better? Uh, you, you paused on me again. Could you repeat what you just said? Yeah. So I remember like that week, I, I, I like journaled like situations and things with people that were making me feel that way. And like trying to insert better things to do in those situations. And I remember being like, wow, this is kind of like a, a variable to a mathematic problem that, you know, I luckily enough have a, a teacher that's like, okay, well, like if that formula isn't working, like there are these other formulas that are at your disposal to put in place of that. And then it's just like, are you, am I responsible enough to fix it? Mm. Do I want to fix it? You know? Mm. That's the question right there, man. So many people get caught up in the shoulds and woulds and blah, blah, blah. This is the way it has to be. And it's like, just ask yourself this question right off the bat. Do you want to fix it? Do you want to experience something different? Yes. Okay. No. Then don't complain. Right? All right. Um, with that last little bit, because I don't want to hold you any longer. Result, as far as results co are coming in, any more come to mind? I mean, so my, as far as, yeah, yeah. Like as far as the green thumb goes, like I have like numerous things growing successfully that I'm going to be able to eat. And I, I just, last night I ate a bunch of potatoes that I grew voluntarily on my own. Um, so like, that's one of the one things and, you know, physically, like physically, man, like I am back to a point where like, I've made probably more gains physically than I ever did taking all sorts of performance enhancers and everything like that. Like just nat, you know, like naturally doing it the right way. Um, you know, and, and just, uh, with work, dude, like I have numerous successful accounts that like keep me busy and I get to go out there every day and help somebody. Like there's, there's not one day that goes by that I don't get to go out and help somebody. Mm. Um, you know and uh, like we talk about my credit score dude like my credit score yep. went up yep. you know like the financial side of it like yeah I, I still struggle but like you know seeing like seeing that plan start working itself out like paying off old debts and stuff like that man it's really cool um you know and just like the team the team that I have around me like I I know that the people around me like support me in the changes that I'm making you know, and like, that's, it's cool when you like, you know, add more team members to your life, you know, when they're like, Hey, you know, you have somebody you can depend on. It's really cool. Everything's been really cool. That's what's up, man. It feels good. It's like the tribe, the tribe grow, grows, right. And the more that you become the best version of yourself and who God, the universe created you to be, the more that you attract those that have that same prerogative and that same intent um i'm trying to think if there was there's anything else we hit the physical body we hit all the changes that's amazing the way that the anchoring ended up feeling uh we hit on the relationship with heather with family with different relationships in the family and friends we've hit on uh career and how that's exploded and different networkings and opportunities are still abundant uh health and fitness the other thing would be spirituality because um, mental emotional health goes in all of that. The other categories that I ask if where people want to improve is family, career, spirituality, health and fitness, personal growth and development relationships. So before we, before I ask you who this is for spirituality, is there anything that you experienced in that sense? Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wild. Cause all these things kind of tie into each other. Um, like all, all, I feel like all of it is spirituality. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like me and the universe, um, got back to being on the same page as like, as, um, I forget how to, how to explain it, but like it's we, me and the universe mutually benefit each other mm. you know? and and i like if you align 
with what you believe that you're supposed to do. Like, and I feel like I'm starting to align a lot more with what I'm supposed to do with my life. Um, like I said, you know, things will just move out of the way and get in correct position. And um, yeah, man, I just, um, you know, I meditate a lot more. I finished more books this year than I have probably since I was like in elementary school when we had assigned reading, you know, Congrats yeah. to you. That's awesome. That's awesome. 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 Who is this for? Who would you recommend this program for? Anyone. So anyone struggling with something in their life where they don't feel like they have either the tools or the answers to get there. Um, anyone who has goals that they feel like they have been wanting to do them, but they don't know how to take the steps to get there. Um, anybody that feels like what they're doing every day is not what they're supposed to be doing. Mm. And, and they know that there's something else, but they're not sure what it is. Um, you know, anybody that just wants to be better in some way, shape or form, like it would be super beneficial to join this program lay out a couple things that you want to work on and just watch those flowers bloom into who knows what. And the truth is, is that when you start, you have no idea what the finish is going to be like. And when you do get done with the program and you sit back and you like go through these lists of things that happened, it's crazy wild how like things just abundantly flourish in your life. Um, so yeah. Those people. It's, it's, uh, my people, huh? My people. Yes. Your people, my people, our people. Yeah, our it, people. Um, it's wild afterwards. Cause I, cause, cause after reviewing with you and hearing you say, you know, over 50%, cause we wrote down a lot, like for that, the person listening, we spend about four hours digging into what it is that you want and what has been preventing you from getting there. You know, why are you here with coaching? What's the problem? What do you want? And then I ask that over and over and over and over and over. Right. So we really get deep on some things and some things that uh, the, the client may not realize that they want to create, not specifically with Paul, but with other clients I've experienced, right? Like, Oh, I didn't realize I still wanted to do that. Oh, I didn't realize I still wanted, and that will pop up. And then, so then when we get to review it and you hear how, the person might reprioritize some things in life and then find love in it, right? Like when you were talking about agriculture and horticulture, I remember you saying one, one time period that you hadn't done that really since college, you know? And then the same thing with taking care of animals, you hadn't done that since your, your, your time, um, your, your time reflecting essentially, right? And now those are two major pieces back in your life that brought you so much joy before and, and you didn't have for a while. And it's just cool to, to really see how, how not only have you created these results, but you're still continuing, right? Like say you work with a personal trainer for four months, you get the results that you want. And then depending on that client, right? Six months later, they might be back to where they were if they're not still working with that personal trainer. And although it's been what, three, four weeks since we really been not even that since we've had the call, it looks like, and it sounds like everything is still progressing and you're still receiving success too. Is that right? Like it, you haven't resorted back to old, to old uh, thought processes and belief systems. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like I, I developed these processes from my day to day that like, are are now just my day to day like it's not it's not like something that you can shift out of easily when when you have like result when i mean when you see results like you're not going to stop you're not just going to say oh like look at all this amazing stuff let me just like put that on you know let me just let all that go it's like no like just you know let me just keep doing all this stuff and see like what a year does you know um you know, that, that, that's why I'm going to keep doing this because like, I know, I know that if I do this for another session, like, oh my God, like the results could be 
who knows, like may, maybe I, you know, jump a whole nother level financially, you know, maybe physically I jump a whole nother level, you know, like maybe those levels that I think in my head that I'm going to jump are not even close to what I'm actually going to attain. You know, mm-hmm. the biggest thing I've noticed is when we're finished with all this, we check two, three, four times with the unconscious mind, are there any events? Are there any emotions? Are there any beliefs? Are there any decisions that need to be cleared? And sometimes there is, sometimes there's not. But ultimately, once we get two solid, two, two answers on two separate occasions that say, you're cleared, you're cleared. And, and, and essentially, if there's a problem, you're creating it in your mind, right? So why would you want to use what is the, 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 the such powerful gift of the mind and attention and intention to continue to create things that you don't want and you have this new identity. So why wouldn't you, like you said, keep multiplying, whether it is together or not, because I like to get that option, right? Like I want my clients to no longer need me, but to want to accelerate and to want to have these things, but they're good on their own, right? It's like working out. I don't want the codependent relationship. That's not good. We're inter- interdependent. We benefit each other as we work together, right? And and that's the the biggest difference is it's not codependent. It's not independent. We're all connected. We work together and we honor that and then move forward to, to serving humanity and the world together. It's like figuring out you got superpowers, you know, like, are you really just going to like sit at home with them? <laughs> you know? Great power also comes, comes great responsibility. Such a good movie. Such a good movie. Such a good so that, This is the last one. This is the question I mentioned to you. And then I, uh, I, I said that I wasn't going to tell you. So, Paul, there's a billboard and you get the opportunity to put whatever you want on there. And all seven billion people plus in the world are going to see it. What are you writing? It can be explicit. It can be whatever you want. What are you writing on that billboard? Be the hero of your own fucking life. Mm. Be the hero of your own fucking life. Just like that. Okay. With an exclamation point. I use it as the podcast title, so I might not be able to put... Oh, okay. Well, then you're going to have to use, like, at money sign. Yeah. We'll be able to do... Well, I'll I'll, I'll make it work. Be Be the hero of your own fucking life. Yep. I like it. Because who else is going to do it for you? The dictator. You might. Sounds like Kai. Sounds like Kai Green. Nobody's going to save your own life. Like you got to do it. And yeah, and like you, you deserve. Everybody deserves to know that like they are the reason that their life is as great as it is. You know? mm, I really like that because most people would say, maybe they wouldn't. I think most people would say the reasons why my life aren't the way that I want it is because of circumstances outside of me. So that means I would need circumstances outside of me in order to make my life great. But then when you start to come from the place of, no, my life is shitty because of me, and it can also be great because of me, then the potential for possibility and the potential for anything becomes possible because- yeah. You're taking that responsibility. And, and it doesn't matter. Um, it, it doesn't matter what you believe in spiritually of how, how, what that means to you to be your own hero. Um, you could say that you're a vessel for a divine being and, you know, like you're acting out what God wants you to do. Um, you could say that the universe and you coexist and you know like you're mutually benefiting each other it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it it's about knowing what your purpose is and knowing that you're powerful enough to make that purpose come true and that it's your responsibility as a human to do those things that you know deep down in your soul that you're responsible for um like it's 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 not about being egocentric it's about knowing that like you like you are the cause, you know? Um, mm. Yeah. Oh, well, I could talk to you all day, bro. That was so good. Oh God. Um, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here, sharing 
your knowledge and your wisdom and your wealth with the viewer, with me, or with the, the, the oh my God, the listener with me. Uh, it's going to be just a couple of weeks before this releases. Um, last little bit, is there anything that you want to say to the listener before we, we cut it off? No, just that I really recommend this program. And if they have any questions to reach out to you or me, um, just, you know, do it, dude, just do it. Like, for, t- like take, take a leap and, and do it. And dude, I appreciate you so much with everything that you helped me with. Like I could cry, you know, I like this whole session has been amazing. And like the, the people that we've been able to affect with this stuff and they don't even know that it's happening, but like they appreciate it too. Um, so yeah, man. Mm, thank you. Thank you for being open and I shared all that with you on our last session. Thank you for being open. Thank you for being receptive, for being here, for, for taking action, because that's the biggest thing, and for implementing, because it, it makes all the difference. So uh, where can they find you, Paul, if they want to ask you a few questions, get motivated by you? I don't know if y'all know this, y'all, but Paul is going to be on stage as soon. Uh, he might not even know it, but he's going to be impacting the world and serving people in in such a way so look out for him paul where, where can they find you and reach out to you um uh paul dupree on facebook paul dupree on instagram um southern medical in slidell is our office you, if you need to walk in and come find me you can um or you know like i would i would prefer you to talk to eric and then let him say hey look based off what you told me this is one of the clients that you should talk to based on what's going on with you. Um, But yeah. Sounds good. I love the instructions. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, remember that you are unstoppable. You are the cause, not the effect. And you can have and do whatever it is that you want in life because any moment it's 100% possible 100% of the time. We'll talk soon. Peace.